Hey folks, this episode is sponsored by Quello Concerts. That's Q-E-L-L-O Concerts. Quello lets you stream the world's largest collection of full-length HD concerts and music documentaries on your mobile phone or tablet. That's iOS, Android, or Windows. And on your computer, your smart TV, Amazon Fire TV, PlayStation, Roku, and Apple TV. It's got all kinds of great stuff like the Rolling Stones in Exile and Nirvana Live at the Paramount. So go to QuelloConcerts.com slash VIP slash Marin for a free trial. That's QuelloConcerts.com slash VIP slash Marin for a free trial. Thanks, Quello. 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 Q-E-L-L-O. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do the show now. Are we doing this? Really? Wait for it. Are we doing this? Wait for it. How? What the fuck? Number duty. And it's also, eh, what the fuck? What's wrong with me? It's time for WTF. What the fuck? With Mark Marin. All right, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers? What the fuck, buddies? What the fucking ears? What the fuck, Nicks? What the fuck, Adelics? What the fuck, Minster Fullers? What is that fucking sound? Come on. Come on, that's pavement, man. Come on. Listen to this. It's going to happen in a second. Fucking pavement. Why am I playing this? Here we go. Here we go. Oh, shit. I've been listening to this for days. You know who pavement is, right? Is anyone listening doesn't know who the band Pavement is? Doesn't know who Steve Malkmus is? Doesn't know... Who his new band is, Steve Malkmus and the Jicks. Do you not know? Here we go again. You ready? This, you know, it's weird. When I interviewed him, I'm like, well, I'm going to listen to Pavement again. That was weeks ago. I've not stopped listening to Pavement. I got to turn this off now. I got to turn it down because I got to I gotta focus. Wait, it's going to happen again. They're going to go up with that when he's going to scream. Fucking Pavement, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, enough, 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 enough. That was jarring to turn it down like that. Steve Malkmus. Steve Malkmus was sitting across from me in this garage. Steve fucking Malkmus. Pavement, man. Hi, I'm Mark Marin. This is WTF. Am I just, I'm a little excited, I guess. All right, let, let me just do a couple of things. Let me do a little business. My show, the new season of Marin on IFC, uh, premieres May 8th. I'd like you to watch that. The first episode is, is great, as are the rest. So enjoy that. I believe my vinyl album, Thinky Pain, uh, the, my last special is being released on CD and vinyl. A double, a double vinyl. A double album. Vinyl. Go to WTFPod.com. Check the calendar. I'm going to be in Nashville. I believe on May 18th doing a one-on-one WTF with uh, Vince Vaughn. That should be interesting. One-on-ones live are kind of tricky because, you know, the compulsion to entertain is there as opposed to just a compulsion to chat, if you know what I'm saying. Also, coming up on my show, she'll be here um, soon, Rebecca Corey. She's hilarious. Uh, she's going to be she's going to be on the show soon. Uh, but this week she's marching on Washington, folks. She organized the Pibble March on May 3rd. That's that's Saturday. It's a march to end animal abuse and help rescue efforts. You can find out more info at stand up for pits dot us and follow her on Twitter at the Rebecca Corey. That's uh, R.E.B.E.C.C.A.C.O.R.R.Y. She's hilarious. I'm looking forward to the episode. But this is something she's very involved in. She she's looking for justice uh, and and good treatment for abused pit bulls. And uh, I think it should be supported. And I think you should go out for the Pibble March on May 3rd if you can on the Mall in Washington D.C. Folks, I told you the other day about the berries, the Sherry's berries. Uh, I had a box of Sherry's berries in my fridge. Well, they're gone now because I ate them. Do, do I feel good about that? I do not. But were they delicious? Yes, they were. If I had a mother who could eat normally, I would have sent them to her. But I don't. So I didn't. 
Most of you are not in that situation. In fact, I'm sure most of you have moms who would be thrilled to get some freshly dipped strawberries delivered from Sherry's Berries. In fact, I'll guarantee that if your mother doesn't have an eating disorder, these giant dipped strawberries will be a huge hit because they're huge strawberries. They're like the size of a baby's fist. They're dipped in white milk and dark chocolates and topped with chocolate chips, nuts, and my mother's nemesis, chocolate swizzle. That's right. It's like kryptonite to my mom. Just use my code WTF when you order. Here's how to get this amazing Mother's Day deal. Visit berries.com. That's B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and type in WTF. That's berries.com. Click on the microphone and type in WTF. They are spectacular. You'll get this huge box of all these berries with all these different kind of coatings, and there's enough for her to share with anybody or just to eat them by herself. You, you, she, you, this is the kind of thing where people will come over because you've never seen strawberries so big and so pretty. You're sort of like, I got to show you these things. Don't eat them. I'm eating them. I'm, I'm pretending I'm your mom right now if, if that was the situation. Not my mom. We established that. Move past the plug, Mark. I've been playing a lot of guitar. I think it's important that you know that. There's a couple of things that you need to know. Some of them not uh, happy. Some of them happy. I've been playing a lot of guitar because I'm processing feelings. Some people meditate. Some people run. I've been running as well. I've been trying to run. Uh, and that's when I've been listening to pavement. But I play guitar because I, I, it works for me to sort of get out of myself. Um, you know, I, I'm very candid with you people. And things happen in my life that, uh, that I have to process, uh, before I can share them because I have to figure out, you know, how to share them and, you know, what I'm feeling about it. And, uh, and, and you guys have been through some shit with me. I know that. The thing is, is that, uh, uh, Moon and I, uh, it, it did not work out. And, um, it's, it's, it's paralyzing and it's sad. Uh, it, it did not go on too long. Uh, I have so much love and respect for that woman. She's a genius and an amazing person. And, and, uh, you know, I'm in love with her, but, you know, whatever was happening throughout my life and whatever was happening throughout her life that, you know, that, that kept us apart, you know, when we had the window to be together, we took it and, I don't know that we were emotionally prepared for each other. And it's it's a sad thing when something you want so desperately to work out just just can't. It just can't for whatever reasons. Um but but as I said, I, I have nothing but love for that person. And I don't know I don't know what to do anymore when it comes to to relationships. I believe, you know, we did the right thing. And, uh, and I hope the best for both of us. And we both learned a lot about each other and about ourselves during the, the, the very intense, very engaged five months we were together. But I just, I, I guess I gotta be alone. I, I don't, I don't know how much my, my heart can really take in terms of, of trying to make, or not even make, but just trying to, you know, I, I've got to figure out what I want. I've got to figure out what I need. I don't know. You, you know, we just sort of, you know, plow blindly into things that our hearts believe they want, you, you know, and I believe that there was destiny to this, to this, uh, to this relationship. And, and I, and I believe it was profound, but I, I just, it just, it just couldn't work. And it's, uh, and I don't know what to do. You know, I'm a grown up. And, you know, some parts of me are, are, are better than others, but like, I, do I just have to give up on relationships altogether? I, I don't know. I, I guess I just, you know, I gotta be alone and just deal with, uh, being alone and being okay with that and, and just, you know, not, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. And it's upsetting to me. It's upsetting. And I, I, I imagine I'll keep trying, but it's like, it's, it's just what, and, 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 you know, I think there'd be another point in my life where, where it could have went on for years and, and compounded. And I, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I do. I know exactly what to do. You know, listen to pavement. I mean, like sometimes like, I mean, what are my options? 
I can't do drugs. I can't drink myself into a, a, a coma. I just, I just got to feel it. I just got to feel it. Move through it. But I don't think I can play this whole song without getting into trouble. So now I'm going to have to get back into the feelings. Okay, I'm back in the feelings. So I, I don't, uh, I, I just wanted to get you guys in the loop. There, there's, there's no big story. Uh, it just, it just, uh, it just didn't work out. And I'm sad, but, but, um, but yeah, I do want to thank the people that came out to the Trippany house, uh, for all the shows. They were very exciting. I went some places I never thought I could go, uh, comedically, and I shined some light in some darkness and, and moved through it. And I think we had a great time. I think the hour is going to be, uh, a, a great, a great, uh, a great hour. And I, and I really want to thank you all for, for coming out. And I want to thank my mother for, for causing all the difficulty as, as, and I'd also like to thank my father for being the, the very specific type of, uh, pain in the ass he was for destroying me. Uh, on an emotional level so I could be the creative person that I am. You know, that's the other thing. And I've said this before. I, I, I tend to believe that my parents are an emotional terrorist organization and I am some sort of Manchurian candidate, an emotional suicide bomber that, uh, will detonate, uh, as soon as he gets into the country, into the parameters of intimacy. And, uh, I will just uh, explode in chaos. Sad. But it is Mother's Day, and there are 10 more days until Mother's Day, and we're doing the Pro Flowers thing again this year, folks, like we do every year. This is always a great deal, so we're happy to bring it back. You can make your mom's day with a dozen assorted colored roses from Pro Flowers. Order them at proflowers.com and get a free glass vase for just nineteen ninety nine. You can also upgrade to the pink potted rose or yellow potted rose plant for just nine ninety nine more. Those are for moms who like getting their hands dirty, folks. Just use my code W when you order we always have a lot of people telling us how easy this was and it made for a great mother's day gift all right mom is happy you're happy just pick your delivery date and it's guaranteed folks go to proflowers.com click on that blue microphone at the top right corner and type in wtf that's proflowers.com click on the blue microphone type in wtf oh my god here's the deal I'm starting to believe that, you know, you know, I, I believe I'm a good person. I believe I'm, I'm an emotionally, you know, capable person. I believe that I have an open heart, but I believe that sometimes my heart is overly sensitive and closes up and, and gets, you know, defensive. Now you guys know that about me. So some of the things that I got to choose about the future of my life is, is what do I want out of relationships? And now here's the weird thing is that, I think that my relationship with you, whoever's listening to this right now, is, is actually a fairly genuine relationship. It may seem one-sided to you, but, and it is, but, but, but who you get right here on this mic is, is really the best that, that I am. And I'm starting to believe that sometimes the best relationships I have are with the people I talk to across from me. Because I, I don't, what, what is, there's no tremendous emotional risk for me in, in being, you know, wide open and, and connecting with that other person and their story. And, and I think that's really me at my best, uh, in a lot of ways. So I just, I, I don't know if I'm asking you to, I don't know what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that, that our, our relationship, our relationship is very important. And the relationships that you guys witnessed through your ears that happened in an hour, are very important and and really some of the the greater moments of my life quite honestly have happened you know sitting across from you know relative strangers uh you know listening to them uh i i don't know if that's sad <laughs> or what but but there's a there, there's part of me that that needs to to sort of have a a deeper appreciation for what happens here because you know this is my life's work folks this is my life's work and and and, and along those lines um we just got a note. Look, I've been trying to get Albert Brooks on this show for a long time. And, you know, we've gone through people. We, I've, I've exchanged moments with him on Twitter, but we've been trying to pursue him because I wanted him to do the 500th episode. I thought that would be great. He, he will not do it, but he did his, his, his people sent this note and I want to read it to you now. 
Uh, Mr. Brooks is well aware of Mark and his wonderful podcast. When the time is right, we will let you know. But at this time, he is working on a project. He wanted me to let you know that it will happen before one of them dies. <laughs> so, so look forward to that, folks. Before myself or Albert Brooks die, uh, we will be talking in this garage. I promise. His word. All right, let's talk to Steve Malkmus. How'd you end up in Portland? I went there on tour. Yeah. There's a two-pronged reason. First, a long time ago, I'm from California. We went up there. I was in Forestry and 4-H Club, and we went... Um, when you were a kid? Yeah, we would plant trees. Yeah. And because um, I lived in an agricultural area, Stockton. Oh, my God. Stockton. And I didn't do, like, anim- animal husbandry or anything. I did <laughs> jogging, running. Yeah. Which my parents did. It was the 70s. Like, right. running was really in. It's always in. Yeah. But that was the start. Right. Jim jogging. Fix, I think. Yeah. yeah. Marathons. And so they said, we'll have a running thing. And then I did the forestry. And someone knew someone up in Portland that worked for a logging. Yeah. Um, industry and they had us come see like the other side of forestry you know not the trees like the just using them for the man Uh to build the lumber industry yeah Yeah. so we stayed there but i really for some reason i thought it was kind of cool up there back then it's so different from here yeah then later i did some tours there and i liked it i was feeling the manifest destiny to come back west but i didn't L- L.A. in the 90s. When did you get here? 2004. I was here briefly for a, a drug-addled period in the late 80s, about a year. Yeah. And then I came back in yeah. 2002, and I've been here I since. I think you came at the right time. I, I think it got better. So there was something about the 90s that seemed sort of vacant to me, so I didn't want to come here. Musically, s- or in general? Yeah, it's overall. I don't know. I didn't yep. know that many people that were living there right now. Like, it seems like a lot of people I know live here now. It seemed like it was a big transition out of like hair metal into whatever else happened. There was like a almost a decade of like yeah. There was back. I mean, back yeah. kind of. Well, there was like the chilies and yeah. and uh, kind of K rock metal, which is it is what it is. And uh, San Francisco, I'd already lived there, so I kind of just picked Portland. Portland's great because like I I don't know what what you feel, but like up the Pacific Northwest, just the feeling of the landscape. It's like it, it, you really feel something. That's I mean, true. You just yeah. there's something about the gray and the you know the sort of weight of it. It's weird, man. It's like it feels like you're closer to the top of the world or something. I think I liked even just the raininess. I'd never been in rainy and like drinking coffee and the strong coffee and the yeah. in the rain. You know, it's kind of I was into that every day. That's all. Yeah. I didn't know what it would really <laughs> entail, which is always living there and it drives you crazy, but. I mean, I don't quite have can, a handle on it. Yeah. Do you? No. I mean, I, I don't get, want to. I don't really like to talk like it's a real navel gazy place right yeah, now, right? Because they have the show Portlandia. You know that probably. Yeah. And that has a certain cachet, and there's lots of people going. I think it's a city that's really um, looking at itself. Yeah. In, it's up uh, its, it's own. Feeling it's proud up, of right. it, which is it should, but it just I kind of feel pathetic talking about it you know <laughs> yeah i just want to live there you know yeah when i go up there i, I just like i don't get it i don't know what the fuck is going on yeah you know, there's a there's a lot of try too hard around but there's also there's very few black people there's uh, there's not many yeah. people of any color up there um it's a I little mean, bizarre that is bizarre I, I think there was a history there but yeah i, I don't think there anybody is. really talks Seattle about too it. There yeah is. i mean i don't know why i managed to live in berlin and um portland like berlin is creepily white too you know although it's european now there's lots of people from all over europe and Did there's turkish there? yeah. turkish population like a big turkish population mm. it's always weird when there's these populations of people that you know nothing about like armenians i, I don't know what they're doing over there but there's a, yeah they true. have a very specific thing fresno. That they do. yeah fresno right down the street in glendale too william saroyan is from there yeah what was berlin what year did you live there last two years oh so it was already mm-hmm. broken like last just got back in August. What was the what was the uh, intent? Was it creative reasons? Uh, more exploration. Just can you do that at my age? Can you just go somewhere? 
What I mean, what did, did you take anything away? Did it affect you in any way? Uh, I think so. Again, I can't say specifically the place. I mean, I met new people and went to. Did you record? Different pl- uh, no, I recorded in Europe. Yeah, the where new at? album in Belgium. What's the newest one called? Uh, Wig out at Jag Bags. Because I, I listened like in the last month. It was a weird experience I had with Pavement recently. Was that like I was going through my iPod and I was on an airplane and I'm like I haven't listened to Pavement in a while. I'm gonna put that on and I was like, holy fuck, this stuff is still great. It doesn't sound any different. It's timeless. It's amazing. How is this possible? And I listened to like most. <laughs> Most of the pavement on one flight, and I was just had a head full of pavement. How far was the flight? It was like seven hours. Yeah. yeah, we can. I think you can fill seven hours. With I don't think so. <laughs> it's almost but good. I always was hoping that it was music for the future. You know, I mean, I think everyone who's not that successful in their time tries to think that. Um, yeah. Not that that we were completely unsuccessful, or I wouldn't be here right now. Uh-huh. But, um, you know, you're kind you of. You did think about that. Well, I yeah. That it holds up anyways. Yeah. Well, because it does. you because the bands you like, right? You right. like the Velvet Underground. Right. They're they're still good. They're just as good as any band from today in my mind or whatever. So you, I think uh if you're inspired by those groups, hope that that rubs off. Well, I think that it's a matter of production and it's a matter of not attaching the sound to a period. I mean, the stuff that doesn't really hold up is seems to be stuff of its time. There's a few Neil Young albums where I don't know where they came from, but that's it doesn't, true. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. It's timeless. It's hard to say how that's going to be, though. You know, as people's tastes change. I mean, it's sort of a modernist uh, assumption. You know that those recording styles that we like are going to be the ones that the future likes. I mean, right? You never know. It might be all no sound level there. forty-two, and Mike and the Mechanics right. will be the. Velvet Underground of <laughs> no, that, I, I, I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> I, I'm willing to bet okay. that, that I'm going to. I'll say right here publicly that Mike and the Mechanics is not going to be the Velvet Underground of the future. You heard it here first. <laughs> that's controversial. So you grew up you, all all in Stockton? No, uh, pavement. No, you. You're Just all, me. Well, Los Angeles. Just down the way. So you're like you're a local guy. You know this Kinda. place. Yeah. I got a lot of family here, but uh, I don't feel like I know it. I mean, when I was seven, that's the real L.A. This new stuff is, I don't you When know. you were seven? Yeah. That's the, that's the time you put on it? When I was seven, that's when this t- city was great. Absolutely. You were what? 73? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have Steely what, right? Dan was just starting. and You Steely Dan? Manson man? thing. We were just getting that out, and there was yeah. gas crises and <laughs> riots and watts and... People dress real there cool were good for the movies, first time. Mate. Auteurs, a lot of them. The true auteurs, yeah. the, the next generation of them: Scorsese, De Niro, Coppola. Yeah, it was rad. Yeah, and you remember all that. You were part of that at seven. You were <laughs> running I around. I had some friend. I had a friend who was uh, um, in this movie called Bound for Glory, which was the Woody Guthrie yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And With, they were twins. I said I have a friend. I considered them one because they looked alike, uh-huh. but. Uh, you know, I don't know if they still do the twin things with children. It seems like Hollywood wouldn't care about that anymore. Yeah. But uh, they used what, to... the backup do, kid? Yeah. yeah they yeah. would have a stand-in. Sure. It was much easier. Right. Because um, and, and, there's uh, the laws about kids. You might as well have two of them. Exactly. While one of them studies, you get the other one in. Yeah. So they work less, and they were in Bound for Glory. And I tried out for some... I tried out for Radon and Tebe. It was a TV movie. I remember that. Yeah, I yeah. didn't get that part. What were you, what were you auditioning for? Extra, just a the kid, a, a kid that was trapped in the <laughs> by the terrorists. You know, were your parents encouraging hostage? you? Hostage, yeah, to yeah. Go they, into. they thought the we have a lot of Hollywood. And my one of my cousins was in a um, Sun Kissed ad in the fifties, which was they live in um, Santa Paula uh-huh. on an Orange Grove, and Sun Kissed wanted to film it there. And there's a little red schoolhouse, and they're all in the red schoolhouse, and then. Um, this bell rings and then this truck pulls up and there's like a sun-kissed truck yeah. and they open it up and there's a tree, an actual tree in the back of the truck uh-huh. and they like get it and they pick one. And he's in that. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't see that on YouTube. No? No, it's real really? though. It's the only thing they don't have on YouTube is your cousin. I don't know. They had a copy of it in the 70s. I don't know what on happened. On VHS from Betamax? And before that, I think it might have been film. Really? Yeah. So you have a and so you have a little bit of show business in your family then. Yeah. <laughs> What'd your dad do? Uh, 
Not much show business. No? No. He's an insurance... He was an insurance broker. The uh-huh. opposite. I mean, everyone's angry about insurance. Yeah. Aren't they? What insurance do you like? Is there an insurance where anyone's like, I'm really into this insurance? Well, Health insurance, everyone's pissed. Life insurance, it's just a confidence game, gamble. Yeah. Like a really... Well, I think that's what pisses people off is like what is covered and why it's covered and if it's covered and how it's covered and do you understand your insurance policy and why is it so confusing? Yeah. It's like it's a Vegas. Racket. I mean, it's like Vegas. You you can take... You know, it's like you can take odds. You can insure this ar- this pitcher's arm. It's right. Like you can, it's like betting on it right, or right. something. So. Right. <laughs> Did you go to that... That school down in Santa Monica? Do you, you have a fancy background? Mm-mm. No? What is no. the name of that place? You know what I'm talking about? Crossroads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Do you have friends My there? My dad went to a decent school here called Harvard. That's a good school. Yeah. It, he what? says it's like the hardest one to get into now. Oh, well, the high school? The fancy one? That's what he says. Yeah. I don't know. He said he couldn't get my kids in. I said, can you get my kids in, in there if I move here? And he said, probably not, even though... Really? Even though he's alumni? Yeah, and he gave... It was all boys back then. How old are your kids? Nine and six. Boys? No. Both girls? Yeah, two girls. Are you, is it fun? Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah? It's really fun. Did you always you got to get on that train. Yeah? If you're not already. Did you? Were you on the fence for a while? I was just... I didn't think about it like everything. I just jumped into it. Yeah, I didn't think about it either. And you know what? It didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. It could have not happened. I wouldn't have been surprised if it didn't. But, I mean, there must have been something that I wasn't admitting that I really wanted it or something, right? Is it, is it the best thing in your life? I don't know. How did it turn out? Yeah, I mean, it's really like, deep. Why, it's why, great. Why didn't I do this earlier? No. No. No, I think you should enjoy your 30s like in your without kids. Yeah. I mean, of course, maybe later I'll be saying something different. But When you're m- dating. I mean, I'm not... <laughs> what I do. I'm just saying, you can look back to your... Th- when I didn't have kids and I was 30, if I look at, like, when was it so awesome, those were really kind of awesome times as the free, the Clint Eastwood of, you know, yeah. the lone gunman yeah. life. The you lone know, that gunman was good. of pop music. And in the 30s, your 30s, you kind of have that, I think, more. Yeah. Um, you're not commit. You're not kind of old yet, but you're not young. Yeah. My concern is that... uh because I don't have kids, that I'll, I'll be forever kind of missing some piece to my ability to be with uh you know with people. Like I think it yeah. teaches you a selflessness that that it happens innately, but you don't know you have it until it's, it happens. Like I don't yeah. have like. But my, if you're aware of that, I mean, unless you you're get just it. totally neurotic or something, like yeah. I think you really you're on the right path. I yeah, mean, I can get it without kids. Maybe I can still be a, a full or person. Or it's not. It's. I don't know, like, how much you regret it. Do you yeah. regret, it? regret it? Not really, because I think I'm a, a panicky, nervous person. I almost had one, but I, yeah. I, I choked. It's so, just that uh, some people, I, I know, some, they, if you do have these kind of deep regrets of yeah. things you didn't do. You know people like that? Yeah. Not men as much as some women. It didn't um, happen. And they yeah, and it, you know, yeah, they uh, really wanted to, and you know, it's like something I think they think about all the time. That's so, sad. But they also don't know that it's obviously there's stuff that they get to do that we breeders don't. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just whatever. Like take whatever, off, whatever watch they want. TV. <laughs> yeah. I'll watch movies, eat cereal, leave cereal bowls, gut all over your house. <laughs> that doesn't sound very fun, actually. It sounds depressing, but. So are are you guys touring now with the the yeah. chicks? Yeah, like a lot, like heavy. We have recently in the last month. Do you take the kids? No way, never. They couldn't take. They couldn't handle this. It's too. We're not at a level where we tra- travel in a bus and you right. Know, if they wanted to be back there in kind of a hippie caravan, it doesn't work. We're bottom line. It's just like a van. I mean, would you take a kid on a stand up tour? I just had my 15 year old niece in town, and I oh, I took her to some shows, and I, that made me a little uncomfortable. I mean, you got to have somebody watch them, and you got to. Right. I mean, they're going to get bored. 15, though, nine yeah, 15, and six. Yeah. You have to arrange babysitters. Yeah. Do you, do you play like every night, like seven nights in a row? Ever? No, not any, not anymore. I mean, I do a lot of local spots, but if I tour, it's for you know two nights, maybe one night if it's a little theater or something. What would it, what would it be like to? Rec- do seven nights in a row? Would you lose your mind, kind of, or would that feel good? If no, it feels good it? because you gotta, you know, you get if better. You get yeah, the timing. If you work in new jokes, 
You know, it's like I imagine it's a little like music, trying to get something right, and you're hoping something happens every night that is never going to happen again. I imagine that. Do you do you get a thrill out of that? Yeah, but we have a set list and like four people that have to kind of be on the same. We have some little points where it can go off the rails in a good way. Do you allow for that? We, do you still allow for it more, huh? No, more now, actually. Really? Yeah. I were mean, just... we're more dexterous musicians for whatever reason. I mean, there might have been more like a noise jam in Pavement. It seemed like you were really pushing the edge of noise. Yeah. Well, yeah, we were just beginning, and also our influences were very obscure, I guess, bands like Swell Maps or Chrome. I mean, you usually, the music you do is a, some of it is you, but 80% of it is like a fantasy of other people you liked, or, you know, you're sort of not necessarily expressing in, your love yeah. for what they did. They're I don't know. It's not intentional, it just sort of seeps into you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how referential. I know comedy on a macro level, or it's very referential to the point of people like stealing your jokes, right. like that next week or something. Right, it's just building. Right, but I mean, I don't know if you're just like I want to get a Lenny Bruce bit in here or something. I, Push I'd, the envelope. Yeah. Take it out there. Well, yeah, you see what people will take. I mean, I think there's <laughs> yeah. you know, abuse or whatever. Sure, or just... an element of like, I wonder if they're going to be able to handle this shit. <laughs> did you feel that? Well, I did earlier. <laughs> I'm more giving now. I think don't you're more. You got more be. grateful or something. Yeah, that man. People are there. You you think about how long it took to get there in their car or to get a. A babysitter or what they could have been doing. I don't know. Or At least in a sound, town like London, because like I get cranky in cities. I'm like all this traffic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's not even that you like us or you spent twenty pounds. It's more like how much work to be in that spot was it. So but, like I respect you for doing that. I'm not gonna like. Right, but it also took you like what twenty five years to get here. I mean, you've got to have yeah. some. You know, there there's a point with yourself where you feel like. You know, I'm an accomplished musician. I've got an amazing, <laughs> you know, bulk of work. You know, I'm still doing it. I still yeah. like it. People seem to dig it. They're not coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you cross a line where you're like, you can be comfortable in what you're producing. That's true. I mean, early on. I mean, when well, when did you start really playing the guitar? Mm, like uh, pre-adolescent. I wouldn't call it really playing. Really playing? Well, I mean, when did, what, what, what yeah. inspired you to do it? Um, I was in high school and, uh, or before that, uh, high school, I think there were just some older dudes and that were playing and they seemed like they were having more fun than the sports guys. And, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I liked Credence and Devo. I was kind of a mix between these two bands. Yeah. Credence and, is uh, great. That shit holds up on vinyl, yeah. dude. Absolutely. I interviewed that guy. That was insane. It holds up everywhere in the yeah. jukebox. I they asked still him. Still have jukeboxes. I asked him. I asked John Fogarty. I said, "Well, how? Because you because his records. I got a few of it on vinyl, and it's solid. It, it sounds great." And I said, "When you were producing, you know, what was your approach?" He, he said, "I just I would just picture how it come out of the speaker and the dashboard. So when the guitar is playing, put that up front. When the vocals are playing, put that up front." That was it. Yeah. <laughs> well, his vocals never had a problem getting up front with that voice. <laughs> That's for sure. He's amazing. So, but what was this, what was like the first stuff you played? I mean, what, what, how'd you learn to play? Uh, punk. Yeah? Yeah. Well, Did just you take bar lessons? chords. I took some lessons before that from a couple people. One, an old man that I was just learning, you know, really simple folk songs, but that was before high school. Right. And then I took some lessons from my mom's friend from Est, who was like, a, from Est. Yeah, he was like a coffee house. He played at Blackwater Cafe in in Stockton, and yeah. he kind of he would, would he would wear a tank top and he kind of had BO and stuff. But like he he and he had a weird <laughs> Yamaha guitar, and he he played all as a coffee house with the electric soft. But right. he taught me like something by the Beatles. He taught me weird chords, like yeah. diminished chords, yeah, yeah. his own versions. But right. that, I really like that. You know, I I wanted to get beyond you know smoke on the water and just. Louis Louis, even though I like those, 
Isn't it weird that those that those remain a constant in learning guitar? Like you know, if you like that and sunshine on your love, smoke on the water, Louie yeah. Louie, anything that you can get, a, you can wrap your hands around at the beginning. Yeah, it's the same with even classical music. They're playing like Twinkle Twinkle. You know, right, it's yeah. just I it's don't a way know why. In. It's a you way know, in. You need a way in. But yeah. once you get just that little seventh, yeah, those things where you're like, oh, I'm, or the Hendrix. Uh, Purple Haze chord, the jink, jink, you know, yeah. you're, it's like you're learning the secret. Yeah, yeah, the whole, you know? the whole missile, yeah. that moment where you get that, it's a yeah. pretty amazing moment. And you realize it's not even that hard, yeah. which is, uh, <laughs> yeah. but of course, there's farther you can go. But so that took me, and then I wrote tunes in the punk band, I was in a punk band. What were they called? Straw Dogs uh, from the West Coast, not, there's a Boston one, <laughs> not that anyone's going to notice <laughs> Except they probably listen to your podcast, but in the van, yeah, we were a band in Stockton, and yeah. we uh, opened for some other groups from back in the day. Yeah, like who? Mm, like um, I'm just gonna brag a little bit here. Um, Circle Jerks, yeah, Black Flag, all the LA punk bands, TSOL, uh-huh. uh huh, Code of Honor, there's uh, DOA, really, some bands like that, yeah. yeah. Always the first on for twenty bucks, but we did play. But were you like, what? Were you not? Were you like twenty years old? No, I was sixteen. So, oh, so you're the local guys, and you yeah. just and punk was so sort of marginal anyway. So it, the scene was pretty small, I imagine, at that time. Very small. There was a couple bands from Stockton. Um, a very good one called the Authorities. They made one single, um, and they were the only ones that got documented. But. uh but there was a little bit we of We played scene. in Sacramento, San mm -hmm. Francisco, just that triangle for like one year. But there was a band before called the Young Pioneers that we, they were a communist. They were communist, you know, that was their angle. Right. They were like yeah. Yeah. communist youth. Uh huh. And so all the songs were like Kinko the Pinko and Communism Right Now and uh -huh. Red America. Uh huh. But we dropped almost all those songs and started as the Straw Dogs more pure. Yeah, and what were you? What kind of songs were you playing? Just straight out, punk, just jokey, fast? jokey, fast. Uh huh. Not political. You had a good drummer, Dead Kennedy. Yeah, he was really good. He yeah. was into Discharge. Yeah. His name was Glenn. Yeah. He 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 was the best part of the band. It's important to have that with In the fact, punk outfit. When he quit, yeah. Then we got the drummer from Young Pioneers, and he was like a junkie kind of. He liked the Dead and stuff, and so it was over. It was <laughs> yeah. Dope and the Dead killed yeah. it, huh? Mm -hmm. You're not a dead guy? I am now, but back then, I didn't like him. You couldn't. It wasn't allowed. Mm -hmm. No, I you didn't. You keep that there shit There was hidden. some dead punk crossovers, not just Black Flag. Yeah. And some other meat puppets, but there were in my school. Yeah. Uh, there were some, because they were counterculture-ish, although they were, by the 80s, verging on, like, you've seen that Touch of Grey video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like your mom... Sure. Wearing a purple tie dye or yeah. something, you know? Yeah. And I think they're amazing. I mean, I was never a deadhead. I dead like head. them too, but. I was never a deadhead, but like, you know, those albums, the studio albums, are pretty fucking wild. And they're like, nothing ever sounded like that before. And it seems like some of that, like, uh, and maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like some of the Silver Juice stuff in David Berman, like, there was definitely something laid back and in, in, in inspired by that type of music. Was that there no, at all? I, never, he, no, I don't think he liked the dead, but. No. He likes country. Yeah, uh, our our newer. I mean, I I like them as a example of, I guess, to be cliche, like weird America. Just the way they built their their scene, right, and developed their own their own world. You know, sort of. Not yeah. many people were able to do that. Their own iconography, and even though it was West Coast, yeah, um, pretty strange. Yeah, uh, trippy. And I long, think is the word long, yeah, long and strange. <laughs> So from the punk thing, how did you evolve from there? I mean, you left town? I went to school, and then I just met, like, uh, again... Where'd you go to school? UVA in Charlottesville. Uh, Have you ever been there? You went to, I've been to uh, Virginia. I don't know if I've been to that campus. It's a historic place. Edgar Allan Poe went to school there for one year. He got kicked out for... Um, morphine? A, he never did <laughs> morphine. That wasn't true. He no. was an alcoholic. Right. But uh, gambling debts primarily in college yeah he because they were betting with these uh local inn keepers the school was like brand new when mm -hmm. he went there it mm -hmm. was just thomas jefferson died that year 
and uh and yeah he got kicked out and then so he went and joined the army and uh and the navy and then he decided he wanted out of that and then he went to west point somehow his parents got him into west point and he totally failed out of there too because he was just dissolute and drunk too, too smart for yeah. everybody and yeah. he's a genius there's yeah. nobody he invented so much stuff he's like you love poe yeah he's beyond i don't know who dylan you know i mean he made those science fiction and detective novels and that, that he was, started all that stuff really he's ours too yeah he is he's from the us of a so were you obsessed with him no you just like got into it because you went to school where he went to school i didn't even it. like him back then i yeah. mean i thought he just wrote kids stories you know things that the were raven kind of haunted spooky stories with uh you know pe people reanimated and um when did you go back to it recently oh really yeah i'm ready to i'm want i'm coming back right now like that's why i know all this to po. yeah like i'm reading about his life day by day um i have this thing called the poe log uh -huh. it's not it sounds kind of scatological but it's not yeah it's uh just a day by day everything about him every scrap of information uh-huh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's i guess it's kind of dry are you getting more out of the poems and the not stories? yet. I'm not even. I'm just into his life right now, and then I get to read back on it again. I like the stories better. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll try to. I can't. I'm not a big poetry guy. I try to be. Are you? Yeah. I was. I was. Mm -hmm. There was a like. I wanted to write poetry when I went to college. I was like, you know, I was writing it. You know, I, I don't know. My guys were like. Um, I read a little Poe, but I like uh, um, William Carlos Williams, Emily Dickinson. I She's read great. She's amazing. Yeah. I I'm mean, all for her. Yeah, it's, it's if if you have that experience with poetry where you like, you know, some poems are right, who cares? But occasionally you'll read one and, and that thing yeah. will happen in your head like that yeah. first Jimi Hendrix chord yeah. where you're like, "Oh, what is what?" And that's happened with her a couple times. Yeah. Wallace Stevens, I yeah, got it's into great, that. Great. How about Rilke? That's some good shit too. I don't know, I can't get that. No. Why? To uh to I don't uh, know why. Just not just not, uh maybe it's the translation. Yeah. People are always worried about that. Um, you know that uh, I mean, pe things need to be retranslated for our time, or who did the right translation? Baudelaire. There's a few. Baudelaire of those. did all the Poe. Yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah. He translated. He was a bit. Yeah. He translated into Poe's French. Work. Yeah, and made him a star there. Well, yeah, well, I could see that. That makes perfect sense. I've read yeah. a lot of the different Baudelaire translations. Those things, those poems are amazing. Yeah, he's. I think uh, I like it because it's filthy. Flowers of evil. Yeah. Fleur de mal. Yeah. Rambo, I, I tried to get into that in college too. What, I think Florida I just Mall? like American poets. Whitman, yeah. just wanted to fuck the world. Yeah, just wanted he's to hug, a, it, yeah. hug the world. Yeah. <laughs> he's a uh, yeah. Poe hated the uh, transcendentalists. He thought they were you know Emerson and stuff. He's yeah. like these guys are so boring and fake and mannerist. Yeah, I yeah. also like that when you're like in your time calling out these sort of yeah, yeah. holy grails. Sure. Blake was another one. I don't fucking understand Blake, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, man, he had a fucking system. <laughs> pictures mythology yeah he's got he's built like it all the rock rock and roll poet in the kind crazy of. i mean that i can't it's in some people were so invested in it ginsburg was completely invested in in blake and i can't i you know do you, you interview poets ever on here i haven't i haven't i got a friend of mine who i went to school with who used to live in my uh he was a roommate of mine briefly and he's a pretty big dude pretty big uh poet guy he's up at uc davis i can't understand his poems at all yeah. His name's, yeah, his name's Josh Clover, and he also huh. writes uh, Cultural Crit. He wrote a book called 1989 about Nirvana and the Berlin Wall. It's just way, you know, like, it's English. Yeah. But, I, you know, some cultural criticism. Theory style. Well, yeah, I can't. Where'd you guys go to school? I went to Boston University. Oh, you did? Yeah. I applied to BC, my parents did. I had to meet some um, local Catholics in, uh, in we're not Catholic, but in uh, outside of... They had to vet me or something. I'm like, what's oh, up really? with that? The Jesuits had to vet you. I don't know, you know. Yeah, and that was it. You're like, fuck that. I'm place. not going there. Boston's so confusing. Yeah. Did you like it there? It was school? a good place to go to school, but you know, now I go back and the, everything that I remember about it's gone. You know, like Kenmore Square and, and whatever the rock scene was back in the whatever. When did I go in the 80s? It's all gone. Yeah. It, it like it was so vital. Like the music thing in Boston was so vital, and just, everything's gone. The Rats gone. Bunratty's gone. Everything's gone. So yeah. there's, there's nothing there. It's, it's weird. like hospitals and schools, kind of, isn't it? That's yeah. what it looks like to me when I was just there. 
I spent a lot of time there, and I started my comedy career there. Like Boston, there's in good and of fans, itself. like good intellectual people, for one of a better term. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Well, what was the experience in Virginia? I mean, that's a good school. What'd you do there? What'd you study? History, but I didn't really. You didn't do anything. I wasn't ready. Yeah. I don't is know. I don't sad? know who is during that time. It's a waste. Some, some people are driven, and you know, even if they are at that age, maybe they shouldn't be. I don't know. You well, know, usually so. they're driven if they've got a future goal in mind. When you're a creative person, you're just sort of, I just want to fill my head up with shit. You I know? didn't even know if I wanted to do that. I was completely confused. You know, yeah, I was you just did. drinking and partying and having fun. Yeah. But, and it was good for that. You know, there was, you didn't have to drive, so there were no yeah. car wrecks or whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's really. Wander around <clears throat> shit face. Yeah, it was pretty off. much what was going on. <laughs> it was fun. What happened musically there? There were uh, some bands besides me. We'd go see shows. You know, yeah. everything came through there. Who's we? Uh, my posse, like Berman. And, yeah. Uh, so that's where you met Berman? Replacements. Replacements were happening, I guess, then. And that's a great band, The man. Uh, early uh, Sonic Youth and Butthole Surfers was... A, yeah, wild. We were... That was pretty much the ultimate band back then. For you? Yeah, I mean, for everybody. I mean, I was just step in line in the butthole surfers uh, for live shows yeah you know, it was, did you like you the placements yes yeah yeah of course they were, they were great yeah, yeah. Good let drive. it be i saw a let it be tour that was great i saw um i don't know what else just that kind of era <clears throat> 80s late 80s college rock for want of a better term husker do like yeah like uh that guy can still turn it out. I saw him mm. at Bumper Shoot, I think, a year ago with uh, with uh, doing the Husker Du songs. Did you play there, too? Yeah, I, was, yeah, I played. They have comedy there now. I know. Yeah. They have, like, poetry. Re they have a mix of things. It's a pretty good festival because it's enclosed and you can leave and come back. Yeah, I can't do those. Like, what's that What's that one down south? That one, ugh. It's outside of Nashville, I think. That music festival. Bonnaroo? Yeah, can't do it. It's The weather's rough. The weather's rough and you can't leave. There's nowhere to fucking go. You're just no. surrounded by people getting progressively more shit faced. Yeah, and you there's gotta no have escape. A, you have to have a um, tour bus. You have to. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. building your rep here on this, aren't you? I mean, you've, you bus. built it. You're beyond built. Yeah. You're happening now. You can have a tour bus. You should With bring just one. Just me now. on it. Just, just me. for that one day and, and your posse. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not a posse guy. I me need neither, a posse. But you could do it for Bonnaroo. Just. Yeah. But, you're, but you're but you're running around with Berman. What are you guys doing? Are you playing? Is Back he playing? Then, uh, Were you involved? We had a noise band. I don't know. You know, it was called Ectoslavia. Yeah. Um, Were you serious about it? Were you earnest? No, it was. No, I mean I didn't know goals to do that. I yeah. didn't know that I could do that, and uh, just messing around. Yeah. But Ectoslavia was a noise band. Uh, nothing. Then just got out of there. You didn't play, you know, but you you kept your relationship with him. Who else did you meet there at State in your well, Bob circle? was in the band in Pavement. He's the drummer. And a uh, couple of bros just from Richmond, like dads. Now, I don't know if they'd like to be called that, but, you know, just family guys. <laughs> yeah. They're, That's I'm still, where they ended up. I'm still with them. Then we moved to... Is this how it is? We just talked about my life a little bit. Then we moved on to New York. It's, and, that's pretty uh, good, though, yeah. isn't it? Then we moved on to New York. That's <laughs> yeah. where it happened. <laughs> Wait, do you talk? A, you're saying that like you don't talk about your life a lot. Well, I don't know how the podcast works. I don't know how. I'm just all. happy you're talking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It could yeah. go either way, right? No, I can talk a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, I had this weird idea of you because, like, there, there's someone on Twitter as your name. Yeah, but it's not me. I know, but yeah. for some reason, I would see that and yeah. whatever the fuck that guy was tweeting, and I'm like, wow. And and it, it, there was, <laughs> it became an association in my mind. I'm like, Malmus can't be like this guy. This can't, but because I'd see it, it's somehow stuck in my head. It's not you. That's really bad. No. I knew it wasn't you, but still, the identification was there. That's, that impersonating in the digital realm really sucks. It bums me I've out. I've had man. things. I used to get letters from this person when I back when you used to get fan mail, yeah. which you don't really get anymore. Right, like in the nineties, had a PO box, and I would get these long letters from this girl. They weren't uh, sexual. They were more like soul, soul revealing. Yeah, long things like we, and I. I it was a one way thing. I wouldn't write back. Yeah, but I was kind of. You know, I was just like, this is kind of a trip. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. I get And then emails. by the end, I found out that someone was like, 
fucking with her somehow, like writing her something. Oh, really? She was giving you know, her life story and you yeah, got invested in it. And someone else had been like doing something, writing her and, you As know, you? Yeah. You oh, know. my God. So it was just like... Some dude in her life. Somebody that was just knew her, with she, her. But knew yeah. she was writing to you. Yeah. It started was, fucking and, with her. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking sad. That was really weird. So, and that's a, with this thing with Facebook people, there's, I mean, there's probably 97 Mark Marins. There's a few. I had to shut one down because it pissed me off. Like, you know, it, they, they're they allowed to do that shit on most ne- social networking sets uh, sites if they uh, state that it's a parody account. Yeah. But if they tweet as you, it's not, not, it's not right. It, uh, they, yeah. Uh, that's a so problem. So who do you call them? I, I chased it down on Twitter. I had a contact at Twitter at the time because the guy who was doing it, there was, a, there was a, some scammers that would do that. They would try to suck your followers and then they'd try to sell them something. Yeah. And that guy, yeah. he got into it with me on email. Like, and he was a real fucking nutcase, but it was a, it was a scam operation. A lot of it's to pull followers. Right. So they Just can scam them somehow. Number right. That's thing. right. Yeah. Spam scam. So you go to New York with Berman? Mm-hmm. No, those guys went there first, and As, Bob and David. They mo- da- Bob, this Bob, the drummer of Pavement, moved there to work at like UPS, or just bottom rate, just like yeah, cardboard boxes tumbling down at you for eight dollars an hour. You know, yeah. like you yeah. can lose a limb at any time. <laughs> yeah, and uh, just the only job he can get. And he got an apartment. It was in Jersey City. Uh huh. Um, that was before Jersey City was Jersey City. Yeah, it was nice. Heights. Yeah, yeah. And the Heights is right below Hoboken. Hoboken was like his dream, you know, like yeah. that was Oz or whatever. Like yeah. someday we'll live in Hoboken. Really? And uh, I was um, born in, uh, um, in Jersey City. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't live there. My, my, my father grew up there, but now it's a thing. Back then it must have yeah. been a little dicey. It was pretty. It was a lot of cheap produce, like third generation, you know, passed down the last produce that no one else wanted. And there was a really tall uh, policeman yeah. that we called Officer Slitty for some reason, and he would just, like, make his rounds in this park. He was, like, seven feet tall. Yeah. That's really what I remember. And you could also, on the park, you could, um, in the park, if you laid down on the concrete, you could put your hand right here, and the Empire State Building would be your penis. I've, yeah, I got a picture like that. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's a nice memory, right? Yeah, that's a good picture. I hope you have that picture. <laughs> Put that out. Get that up online. It's weird so, what, you, what yeah, we was, remember. Yeah, it was a, and we fought a lot. You and Bob, all three of us, like just, just psychological warfare, like psychological blood all over the walls. Like what, about Did you what? ever have relationships like that with roommates or people where just? Yeah. yeah, women mixed with alcohol. Yeah, oh yeah, Wait, but I, it's hard to know what what it was about. Do you know what it was about? I mean, some kind of competition. Thing. So it's you, like, Bob, I'm, and who? I'm who was the third guy? Bob and David. Yeah, mainly them. I mean, there was there was. Uh, what were you guys on, on at it about? I don't know. Was it music it, or just I, just you know, ego, ego struggle and yeah. you know there was some what do you call when you flush someone's head in the toilet there was a couple of those sometimes just oh yeah like physical what is that called I fights forgot. yeah oh really you had physical fights yeah. with david and Bob. yeah <laughs> it was rough i guess we were you playing at least we also lived in an apartment about as big as this room like the three of us yeah. so that's not good no that'll do it that's that's uh, the bottom. we weren't playing we were just going to maxwell's seeing bands Working in the city, worked at the um, Whitney. I was a security guard, so was David. And uh, did you dig that? I mean, did it, yeah, it was fun. It's fun just to have a job if you never had. Like I had waiting dishwashing jobs. Yeah, never more than three months. But uh, in a big city like that, for me to have a job was like a huge achievement. And at the Whitney, I mean, did that did that have any effect on you? I mean, that's, there's some good shit there. They got the Rothko mobile there. They got the a lot Rothko Circus is not the Rothko. I mean, it's, the Calder Circus. Calder is one of the big. Yeah. was one of the. It was Ed Ed Edward Hopper and Ed, Calder. Yeah, Calder. Although they had a reputation for being like avant garde, but that's really what brought the people in. Was the Calder um, the Calder Circus? Yeah, they love the film. Cal- that's right in the front. You yeah, remember that? Yeah, and yeah. they had the, and you could go watch the movie on the Calder Circus with yep. the old Calder playing with the animals. Yep, that's still. I hope that's still there. But they've actually sold the building to the Met. Uh huh. So now the Met's moving their collection in there, and they're moving downtown. The Whitney's moving downtown. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Or I like somewhere. It. Did you like being around all that art? 
Yeah. yeah. I like that place. I like the the Met. Have you been to the Tate, the new Tate in London? I've been to the one that's in the yeah, the, the industrial big hangar. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah, that's, that's one of the nasty. best things I've it's ever cool. seen in my life. It's free too, a lot of it, which is nice for the punter. You know, like you don't have to. You can go see the permanent collection without paying. Yeah, really cool. Is there that's art that you feel be. like you got to see every once in a while? Well, my wife's an artist. What is she? Um, what's her medium? She makes everything. Yeah, except films. Like, she, like what? Mixed media? She makes things on the wall. Yeah. They're almost paintings, you know, and yeah. she makes ceramics. Maybe ceramics she got She got her uh, wings with. My buddy, was, he makes it. That's He lives in Portland. The guy who made that mug right there, he makes them for me. Oh, really? Yeah, Brian Jones. So your wife's a potter or just ceramic? Mm, ceramic. She makes just pot, pottery that ceramicists would uh, scoff at, you know, kind of death-defying Oh yeah, we uh, like abstract expressionist pottery almost. I That's mean, cool. she probably wouldn't like that. Yeah, but not necessarily practical cool. pottery. No, it's art only. Yeah, right. It's right. just to sit there, you look at it. There's nothing you can do with it except like yeah. Look say it's it. amazing. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say that. I do. I believe it too. <laughs> good, good. She's All right, so killer. when do you start making pavement records, man? Okay. I don't, I don't want to a little do. bit into the podcast, we get to pavement. Pavement started when we, at that time when I was in New York, yeah. I could just go back home to Stockton. Yeah. The other dude, the founding father, other founding father, Spiral Stairs, mm -hmm. you know, the lifeblood of the band in many ways. He bleeds the pavement. Yeah. He's, you know, he arranged to press the records. We went to this, like, hippie dude's, I'll just call him a hippie dude, Gary yeah. Young. Yeah. Like earlier generation, yes is his favorite band type drummer. A <laughs> little bit fried, but yeah. hard of half gold. Yeah. Um we just happened into his studio and he recorded those albums and he played drums on them. How and that's many? how the band well there's the singles that you were talking yeah. about first, slow build through fanzine culture, I suppose. Um fanzine wow. culture being little magazines people were like this yeah. band's cool and then we made Slant and Enchanted if I was still living in New York I'd just go back there record with them so you guys didn't you, you weren't touring we didn't, didn't tour. practice much there was no no practice just make make it up in the spot so that's All real albums. that's yeah. real that, yeah. that feeling yeah. of making it's it up like on the spot <laughs> three hours <laughs> the singles are made in three hours and then the Slant and Enchanted was like a week though you know but I just would teach the drummer, the songs, and then I play over it like one or two takes. Oh my god! So it's all um, improvised, almost. Pretty much. Now, so. we, we, I had lyrics though. Somehow, I don't know. I must have made those before. You didn't write. You don't write separate lyrics ever. You don't have a like. You know, here's my I notebook. Let's go. I must have, but I don't remember. You really don't remember. Not. I must have. I, I for all the records or just for Swanted and Enchanted. All of them. I, I have, I mean, I've seen the lyric sheets, but I've, I've written them, but I don't remember doing it. I don't even know what I was thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no plan. I just... Uh, but no one sounds like you, I, either as a singer or a lyricist or a fucking guitar player. I don't, you know, you found something. I mean, your guitar playing is, I don't, I don't understand it. It's, uh, it's amazing. Well, there's, <laughs> it's tuned different. Oh, it is? That's differently. Uh, um, that's one difference. Well, how do you uh, even from it? the start. How they, you, uh, first albums C G and then standard like it's a Keith Richards inspired tuning that I never learned to play the Keith Richards song so the high E and is Keith a C? Richards learned it from somewhere else the high E yeah, is a C oh, okay. and then G A to G oh A to so the top and then, two and then the, all the rest you would tune the, the bright string the E is that the high yeah. E yeah, you would e. turn that down to D but I didn't even have a D string or an E string so I just have five strings so that and, then, and the top two are, are C and G. Yeah, and then there's D A D A B, also with no, on those, you know. So I tune E string to D, yeah, doo -doo, and the G string up to A. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So those are like Summer Babe and songs like that. That's what that is. So that might be one reason. Yeah. That it doesn't make sense. And you just did that because Keith did it and you tried yeah, it? And I've, yeah, I dropped D. I don't know where I heard that. I mean, I know like Sonic Youth tune their guitars differently. And but I But then think, do you have to play them differently or you just kind of. Not really. Yeah. You can make bar chords that makes them easier actually. It's just one finger across. Right. 
Um, but your leads too, like, you know, there's sort of yeah. that, that inter- in, interplay between rhythm and lead that's like, it just, uh, it doesn't sound like anything else. Yeah. I can't blame that on the tuning, but, uh, I really, you know, I like Sterling Morrison. I like yeah. these kind of rhythm players. Uh, but you were a Stones guy? I like the Stones. Who yeah. wouldn't want to be a Stones guy? I mean, they. Are, but the way he plays guitar is pretty fucking amazing. I know. I don't know how, you know, because he, sometimes he seems sort of ham-fisted. They all do. Yeah. But they're just the stones. Yeah. You know, they're, they're the good-looking guys, get all the chicks and all the drugs and make the great songs and make a lot of money. But, you know, when you listen to <laughs> Keith, you know, like it's, it, 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 cause for years I was like, all right, he's the greatest rhythm guitar player. That's what everyone says. And so I got to listen to it. And you really listen to it. It's like a little out there. Like, you know, he's like, yeah. a, it's a little bizarre. Like he's just like randomly hitting these chords in weird places. And it seems to fucking work. I don't know how he does it, but he's... <laughs> does all right. He's great. Did you I read mean, his book? He, of course. It's crazy. Everyone read that book, right? How great was that fucking book? I it didn't was a want, blast. I didn't want it to stop. Everyone wants to know what was going on with him. I mean, you know? But it was surprising. Didn't it surprise you how fucking lucid and intelligent and thoughtful he was and like how good his memory was? No, I didn't know what to expect. I thought he was... I, I was surprised it was such a big book. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I sort yeah, of that's pigeonholed true, him. I guess. You know, great yeah. storyteller, and, and yeah, he remembered know, everything. Yeah, I didn't. Know. I was I was interested in his yeah his later period and his earlier period. You know, I, I wasn't so interested in the already well documented part. So that's when he was, that off, was the, good. off reservation and out yeah, of his mind, just tripping out. Or well, it's whatever. amazing how <laughs> not only ambitious and on top of it they were, but yeah, as business people, I mean, he was no dummy either. I mean, they knew what was going on with the Beatles, and they were sort of yeah. in touch with each other about dropping singles and stuff. That was well, crazy, Andrew. Lou Goldham, is, yeah. he deserves a lot of credit, really, because he kind of set them, he set them up with, the, I think, he set them, not only did he produce a lot of their defining first songs, yeah. you know, he was like, this is how you do it, it's, we're going to the top here, you're a proper band, and <laughs> yeah. it's war, yeah. you know, and the enemy right. is the Who, yeah. the Kinks, and the Beatles, <laughs> yeah. so get out your stilettos, and like, let's do this, <laughs> you know. Did you feel competitive after the first Pavement record? Not like that. But at all? Yeah, I mean, you with your peers, I think you always want, you measure yourself, probably, right? It's not, I mean, you can be an al- a friend of Sebado and... <laughs> he was in here, he's a deep guy. He's, he's rad, you know, but you're also like, are we, can we do this? I don't know if comedy, I mean, I don't know how... Well, yeah, comedy's competitive, sure. It's but, gotta be, I well, mean... Well, the best you can hope for, not unlike music, is that you have an authentic sound... And yeah. then, like the, the competition, the competition's easier because you're not you're not kind of hacking anybody, right? You're not stealing, yeah, or I mean, feeling that. But that's of course, you're going to have you know you want to have a, a after you know once you finally get there somewhere, you know then you're just you need some bros and sisters, some people to commiserate with, you know, right. to say like this, you know, you want to. Isn't doesn't this suck? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So you were going back and forth, and you were playing with um, Silver Jews in New York, and then Pavement. Not back really. Here. Silver Jews was just like a recording in a house, and it was a just a way to push David into doing something with his genius. You know, like he was not a f- music. Not that I was Mr. Frontman or anything, but right. he was very shy and. So we just recorded, and then he gradually built up to well, like American Water, that one you have, and it's great. And envision himself as a, yeah, like a even a kind of country real songwriter. Uh huh. It took him a while to get there to find out what he was. How's he doing? Ah, uh, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Oh, he fights the fight, he's, right? He's been through it. Yeah. Where's he living? Back east? Nashville. Oh, he's in Nashville? Yeah. he's He didn't return my emails of late, two of them, but I don't know why that is. Yeah. Maybe they went to spam. Uh-huh. Are you out there? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, maybe he's pissed at me. You don't know? He's kind of stubborn, you know? I don't know what for sure. Yeah. I don't know how good he's doing. Yeah, I just got into him, you know, when, you know, like when I was... Uh, Getting back into vinyl and I was tweeting about it. People were like, "Oh, you gotta listen to Silver Jews." No, and then it's like, good. It's, it's like great. Yeah, comedy and tragedy and what's it? Reality what, and everything. What, what's his? Uh, what's which is the one? The the rehab one. 
the one where he like you know comes after out of, yeah um what was the name of that record he's wait. i'm on that one too i think is it tanglewood something tanglewood numbers oh, okay yeah 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 have you ever smoked the back of a fentanyl patch and stuff yeah he yeah he went down and i mean he was gonna just end it but he saw the he saw something like and he's got a great partner and Good. I don't know how much I want to say about it. Sure. You see what but happens. He's in the his religion. He's gone back to the um, Kabbalah and like Judaism, like old school Kabbalah. Yeah, not he's the new really Kabbalah. he's old school. Well, he's got like a rabbi. Oh, good. And he's okay. gotten back. He's half Jewish. His dad's Jewish, but he's yeah. he's a hundred percent, and he's really into into studying that. Did were you brought up with any of that? Mm, my parents are Episcopalians, uh-huh. which is boring. But no. were, you, were you a spiritual person? They go. Do you, were you a spiritual person? No. Not really? No. I'm just not. I don't know. I'm still not. So you don't, you, <laughs> do you think that, that Berman was like, uh, like in, in terms of like the two of you, like he, he approaches songwriting different, right? He's, He's a poet first. Yeah. And, I mean, in very bland terms, like he's a poet and I'm a music, you uh-huh. know, I'm a little more air. Uh-huh. And he's really words... Every word is uh, important, and um, you know that's kind of what he hangs his hat on. I mean, he writes a good tune too, but he's just like saws at the guitar, right? You know, yeah. Um, but I take inspiration from his style, yeah. And uh, you know, he probably learns some looseness from me, or I don't know, whatever I have probably helped him. Um, you like the looseness? I do. It's the only way I know how to really do it. You so you never really want to tighten it up. I mean, sometimes I've been in positions I do up to a point, like when we're recording. You know, uh-huh. I, I re-sing things. Uh-huh. I I look at the I look at the loose stuff and make sure it's loose in the good way. So, you do know. you think that the which which album do you think you really nailed it, like in the pavement? Well, American Water, I really like the pavement. You know, it's. Slanted, enchanted. You can't beat that young, young. Uh, you know, just opening the Coca Cola first time you taste it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I would say that people love Crooked Rain and Wowie Zowie. Yeah, Wowie Zowie's also like for how it came, when it came, and how it came out. I should be glad because it's sort of strangely weird. Yeah, for yeah. where we were. Yeah, you know. But then it started to go inching downhill. But you know, there's still how so? Like, what does downhill I don't mean? Know. I think it just gets a little more codified. Yeah, um, what we were. And, you mean uh, you started to sort of like uh, what feel redundant, or that you were just doing what you do? Of, yeah, sort of a style. I mean, we were trying to mix it up every way we could um, by using different producers, going different places, and. But you start to really know what you are, and then it's not as, it's a little bit, you know, there's limits to... Yeah, you start playing to that. That you can't transcend naturally. Yeah. You can if you are a, if that's all you care about. But, you know, I didn't know if that change for the sake of change is good either. You know, if, yeah. like, it's just going to be, you know... There's sort of a life of any idea, right? Be it a TV show or I mean, you can't keep it going. Yeah, and ten years is long for any band. You guys all get along still? Yeah. And you toured there's a little no, bit. Yeah, there's no bad vibes. Um, yeah. How's the new band different for you? Um, I don't know. You know, it's also been just as long, so <laughs> it's kind of the same. Yeah. <laughs> kind of different. I've, it's just different people. You know, you kind of react. I haven't. You, I interact. I mean, I've gotten, I've gotten better as yeah. I go older. I, I think, think that the songwriting's gotten better, don't you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I hope so. That would be ideal. <laughs> and I think everything. The production sounds like you know. It sounds like it definitely sounds. I mean, I don't know. It's a bad word for it, but you definitely sound more mature about your approach to things. And I think that. I hope good. it's good and better. You don't. You know, it's it's hard to escape your your moment, your um m- moment when uh, young people connect with you at the 
you know, yeah. adolescence yeah. and music, and that's like so alive. Yeah, you know, it's um, people are often still chasing that in whatever they, in their love lives, in their music, yeah. and everything. Do you ever feel like a nostalgia act? Uh, not yeah. I mean, sometimes. Because I imagine and rock and roll is a little bit all nostalgia, you know, right. like from the first. Every Bruce Springsteen song seems like it's about like putting nickels in in a um, jukebox <laughs> from the fifties or something, like getting my motorcycle out, and people think he's awesome. So you know, it can't be. You know, I I and just playing guitars. I mean, they're they're not like they're old. Yeah, but I mean, like your fans must. Be, I, I must. It must be a pretty interesting mix at this point of of people. I imagine people are bringing their kids. That's happened. Yeah, like you know, yeah. they're like a lot of your fans are probably your age. So um, the half and half. I have had just in Dallas the other day. Yeah, there was like a dad and his kid was like college age. Nearly. Yeah. So that was kind of crazy. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. We played in Minneapolis and there was this dad brought his like eight year old. He was sitting there right in front, and then I'm talking about you know the shit i talk about yeah it's not age appropriate yeah yeah it kind of threw me for a loop it was worse than having somebody with their giant breasts like sure over yeah. this kid i was just like totally <laughs> afraid or or a fan just like giving me the finger the whole time texting you yeah. know like this yeah. was worse than that yeah because it makes you, uh, you un uncomfortable. Yeah. The kids know. The father knew. It's he their did. responsibility. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, sometimes, when that happens, I'll just go overboard. Like, you brought him. <laughs> We're going to do a little more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's okay. You can get away with that because it's funny to yeah. uh, the greater... It's good for the greater audience, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's what's in the future, man? You're just going to tour? You got... Are you... Are you uh, are you thinking about what do you think about like creatively when you think about it now? Like you're ten years into this. No, you think about the next move. Yeah, always. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that's going to be, but we're right for the at least a year. We're still doing that. I mean, we don't really know. I think. Uh, I mean, it's it's still being defined. What we're like when we play live shows now, they're much different than we. We act differently. Uh, it's just a different feeling. So I don't, you know, it kind of depends on how much people are into it, like how much we will give to it mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. You know, because we can just back off if, in, in terms of touring. You yeah. Because it's a big it's a haul. commitment. You, and all, you, know, no, you know, you want it, you give, I mean, we give a lot. What are you pulling? Want it like back. what, what kind of? How big of the venues you play? Well, it depends on where we play. Yeah. We play if we play in uh, like Alabama. We play to two hundred. Yeah. Here we play at the Will turn. almost crowded. No, I wish. Um, no, I'm happy where we're playing. We're playing on on uh, Wilshire at the old place. So. The El Rey. Yeah. So uh -huh. we'll play there and hopefully it'll sell out. That's good. Space. If not, it'll be close. So that's. Um, When's that? What it's ah, you got to come. I'd like to come. I think. What when is it? This weekend? Mm, it's like ten days. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Do you want to play? Mm, not really. I'm not very good at that. No. I've tried before. It's just not. <laughs> it's okay. Diminished. Yeah. I'm a better talker. Okay. I don't know that for sure. You edit this right. I will be, but. Yeah. No. You sound great, man. So who are you for, like in you know to to finish up? I mean. When you look back on on what you've done and and you know the sounds you've created, which is uniquely yours, I mean, who do you who do you think compelled you the most? You know, in, in your past to you know to like really do what you mm. did, or who do you who do you revere or miss? Ah, uh, wow! I mean, you know, the musical hero, music as music. There's like the punk times. I can't even say individuals. You know, yeah. I'm not an individual person so yeah. much. There's so many heroes, amazing people. It's just like the whole record collection kind of melts into what you are, yeah. hopefully. And Where, that's probably a good idea to not be too derivative because, you know, everyone has has the danger of being really derivative. It's something you have... Creeps in. You can't 
help it, but you, I just, you know, if you have enough colors, just it comes out that yucky brown. That's yeah. you. Yeah. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, so who are they? Like Lou? Like uh, I like Velvet? Lou Reed, the Velvets. I mean, they, they're kind of funny sense of humor uh-huh. mixed with really deep, you know, deep jams. The bootlegs of Sister Ray, there's like Sweet Sister Ray bootleg. Yeah. Like eight different versions of that song. It's all yeah. you really need. What about Iggy? I like the Stooges, of course. The, uh, I don't know. They were not like my, I like Credence more. Yeah. I mean, you, and you end up, when you look at these top 10 lists that people do, it ends up being like Stooges, <laughs> Velvet Underground, David Bowie, Mark Bolin. Yeah. Um, and that, uh, I mean, one band I loved was X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Wild Gift and the first album. When, and uh, the Specials first album. I mean, this is when I was a kid and I was buying, before I really, I kind of wanted to be cool. Yeah. And I was just buying new wave punk. Yeah. And I tried to listen to Elvis Costello, didn't do it for me. I'd listen to the jam, didn't do it. But then like X, I just like play that. No one really told me why. Yeah, yeah. I just like played Los Angeles. That was completely ruined and also the first specials album so and that i recommend that unheard music uh dvd if no one's seen that what is that it's a documentary about x from back in the day oh of, yeah a uh, lot of cool footage i mean it's total like outside your door la style uh-huh it's they're, they're from the sort of thrift shop culture that you can't really um it was a real la thing it's doesn't kinda, happen anymore yeah there's yeah. some kind of I mean, you, you'll see it and you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember those, that, those dresses and those candles and the, um, those yeah. muscle cars. Yeah. I don't they know. were a real LA band, real Americana stuff. And then deep lyrics, yeah. really weird lyrics. Yeah, yeah. And Ray Manzarek jumps on, he's wearing like Dockers and a tucked in white shirt and he's got kind of a mullet and he jumps on stage with them to sing Soul Kitchen and somehow it's not embarrassing. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. So. Well, it was good talking to you, man. Yeah, good talking good? to you. Yeah, you. Yeah. Strong. <laughs> All right, that's it, man. That was Steve Malkmus. I just talked to Steve Malkmus for like an hour. Fucking pavement, man. All right, look. Look. I know I've mentioned this before, but I want to mention it again. Thanks to Quello for sponsoring today's episode. Make sure to stop by QuelloConcerts.com slash VIP slash Marin. That's QuelloConcerts.com slash VIP slash Marin for a free trial to see some great full-length HD concerts and documentaries from your favorite musicians. Thanks, Quello Concerts. I wonder if Pavement's on there. I got to go to Quello right now. Check out Pavement. That's it. That's our show, man. Okay? All right? A lot of stuff happened here today. And I do appreciate you people. And uh, I do need to go play some guitar. And I need you to go to WTFPod.com. If you don't have the premium app, grab the premium app. I mean, get the free app upgrade so you have the full catalog. You know, get involved. Seems like the comment board didn't go away. <laughs> it seems like they're still there. Like, I don't have power over this. I don't know what's happening, but the comments are still there. So go do that. Go do what you need to do. God damn, man. Life is just so hard sometimes in my heart. Outside of my heart, things are okay. Boomerly!